The introduction of the Atlas Copco hydraulically powered percussive rock drill has created a new concept in rock drilling. This is evident in the higher drilling output, an important contribution towards a better working environment for the operator, and a remarkably low energy consumption. In addition, there is the low cost of maintenance and drill steel. Little wonder, then, that this has become an attractive tool for tunnel driving, production drilling in mines, and benching. The Atlas Copco Hydraulic Rock Drill, COP1038, which covers a whole diameter range from 35 millimeters up to 127 millimeters, is playing a vital role in this new era in rock drilling. Its design has evolved from the intensive research and development work that has been going on since the early 1960s. It was only after long and exhaustive tests in a diversity of locations and conditions, field and lab, that the COP1038 and its hydraulic system was finally considered worthy of marketing. Its auspicious debut coincided with Atlas Copco centenary celebrations in September 1973, when a royal welcome was received in the presence of His Majesty King Gustav XVI of Sweden. Here inspecting the all hydraulic rock drill Boomer H132. What was the reason for this comparatively recent turn towards a new energy medium for rock drilling, this obvious challenge to compressed air? The answer? The urgent need for a rock drill with a higher performance, first called for in the 60s and continued into the 70s leading eventually to the development of larger and more energy-consuming compressed air equipment. In underground work particularly, these demands greatly deteriorated working environment through excessive noise and by oil and water vapor carried by the exhaust air into the tunnel or mine atmosphere. More had to be done. Hydraulics entered the scene and conditions improved as this diagram reveals. The hydraulic drill, the lower full line, works more quietly in the low frequency areas where the operator's ear protectors are least effective. With hydraulics, there is no expanding exhaust air, no oil or mist to reduce the operator's visibility, and this helps a lot. However, the hydraulic rock drill has much in common with the pneumatic drill and Atlas Copco's long experience in rock drill design has been put into the COP1038. We'll illustrate. In section we have the piston and a valve which controls the piston movement. For rotation, there is a separate hydraulic motor. Great importance is attached to the shape of the piston itself. These pistons represent half a dozen conventional pneumatic rock drills of different size and output. All operate at a maximum air pressure of 7 bar. The COP1038 replaces all of these rock drills. Designed for a hydraulic working pressure of 250 bar, the piston could be made slender and long, ideal for percussion. Penetration was increased by more than 50%. The wide range of applications now opened up owes much to the design of the rock drill and the versatile pump system. In other words, the machine can be made to operate either with long strokes, higher energy per blow and low frequency, or with shorter strokes, higher frequency but lower energy per blow. The output, which is the product of frequency and energy per blow, remains constant. To set the required impact characteristic to suit the whole size and type of rock to be drilled, simply change the regulating plug on the rock drill and alter the pressure and flow from the variable displacement pumps. Another detail in its design which greatly improves drilling and keeps maintenance and steel costs down is the hydraulic recoil damper for absorbing the recoils from the drill steel. 
Effective flushing is necessary for a high penetration rate. On the COP 1038, the flushing water is taken in through the front head, directly into the drill steel shank. High pressures and flow are permissible. They give better chip removal and reduce wear on the drill bit. Lubrication of the front head, which is not in contact with hydraulic oil, is carried out with a small amount of oil-saturated compressed air, about 150 liters per minute per machine. Now this maintains an overpressure which keeps out dirt, of particular importance when drilling upwards. Hydraulics call for high engineering precision and fine tolerances. Dust and grit just don't belong in a hydraulic system. High grade filters with a three micron mesh safeguard the COP 1038 and its pump system against abrasive substances and thereby prolong the life of all components. Let's follow a complete drilling sequence on a twin boom rig. Boom and feed are positioned. Operator comfort is a priority. Improved field of vision, one of the first considerations. There is a single lever for flushing, rotation, feed, and percussion. Percussion pressure is reduced during collaring with a push button on the tip of the lever. And the automatic system takes over. And so to drill number two. Position for a new hole. Collar. An automatic feed regulation system guards against rod jamming. When the hole has been drilled, the rock drills are automatically taken back before repositioning the boom and the start of a new drilling cycle. The electrical circuit for actuating the automatic system is grouped on two printed circuit cards, easily replaced when required. But the same functions can be supervised by pneumatic components as an alternative. Atlas Copco placed great emphasis on training the operators and service personnel. At their main service school in Stockholm, at Dorta companies, or even on the client's work sites, Instructors conduct courses regularly using a variety of methods and media. In addition, special training packages called Praju packages have been developed for self-tuition. The company provides headsets and taped instructions in several languages for on-site training. Service and training are part and parcel of the product itself. And these packages often follow the machines on delivery to all parts of the world. Assembly of the hydraulic drill rigs destined for underground work is carried out at the Sikla works at Naka in Sweden. Increased standardization led to the adoption of a modular system whereby each rock drill with its feed, boom, pump system and control panels form a standard unit. Each unit has a 45 kilowatt motor as prime mover. These standard units can then be incorporated in drill jumbos of different sizes for different applications. Differentiation is made between standard rigs, which are delivered complete with carrier, and rigs belonging to the Promex system where the drill units are mounted on a bed frame which matches the client's own choice of carrier or on the carriers which are supplied by Atlas Copco sales companies. The electrics are neatly grouped together in a readily accessible locker on the rig. Let's look more closely at one of the widely used standard units, the all-hydraulic 
Boomer H-132. It's built up on the chassis of a standard, diesel-driven, articulated loader dumper. It has two hydraulic booms, and in this particular version, has been equipped with a service platform. The Boomer is intended for driving tunnels having cross-sections between 15 and 70 square meters. The electric power supply comes via cable for which there is a reel drum for taking up 125 meters on the carrier. Built-in telescopic jacks stabilize the carrier and rig for drilling operations. Note the heavy yet flexible hydraulic boom with telescopic extension and feed rollover function. This allows for narrower lookout angles to be used, which in turn reduce overbreak. For drilling the lifter holes, the rock drill can be swung to the inverted position. A telescopic boom carries a service platform from which marking out, inspection, charging, etc. can be performed in full safety and ease. Our camera follows a typical Promec rig from works to site. This Promec is a type which has proved particularly successful with the Norwegians. All functions are finally tested before delivery. This fourth in a series of similar rigs is en route to Norway. The locally built carrier awaits its arrival in Oslo. Careful preparation has been made which speeds the mounting. Well on schedule, the whole rig now moves off to the client's site, a hydroelectric power project. In keeping with Atlas Copco policy, one of their instructors is always resident on site for service training. Here he's going over the electrical system for the benefit of service mechanics. This on-site training has been a basis for the success of Atlas Copco's hydraulic rock drilling rigs. No site is left before the customer's personnel have been thoroughly trained in operation and maintenance. On its way to the first test drilling in the tunnel. Training is continued down here until Atlas Copco's instructor is completely satisfied that his trainees can take over. Hydraulic drills come into their own for long continuous production drilling in high output mines. Here is an Atlas Copco hydraulic production rig drilling 25 meter deep holes down a mine in central Sweden. Another Atlas Copco all hydraulic drilling rig, which is enjoying considerable success, is this hydraulic crawler drill, Rock 810H. Here, the versatile COP 1038 is in its bench drilling version, which can cope with holes from 64 millimeters to 127 millimeters in diameter. A 100 horsepower diesel drives the hydraulic pumps and ancillary equipment. Air for flushing, seven cubic meters per minute 
is supplied from a separate compressor. There's also a dust collector which takes care of all drill dust and particles. Operator comfort and fatigue reducing features such as mechanized rod handling have been incorporated. Like its hydraulic underground counterpart, this crawler drill offers high drilling capacity, better working environment, and lower energy consumption. Atlas Copco has such an adaptable range of pneumatic and hydraulic rock drills that they can advise you well on the most suitable equipment for any drilling project.